Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called In the Hall of the Mountain King. It's by Burnt Island Games. It plays two to five players, takes about an hour or so to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game, In the Hall of the Mountain King, basically you're playing as trolls who had to leave their mountain due to gnomes and whatnot infiltrating it, and then suddenly the mountain collapsed. When that happened, the trolls, you guys, decided to go back in and reclaim it, building it back to its former glory. You'll be taking actions to gather new trolls, to dig more tunnels, to gather statues and pedestals, to in turn score points and at the end of the game based on how far you dug into the mountain and how well you placed your statues and pedestals and great halls, you'll score a ton of points. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. The game plays in turns and in rounds in which you're going to be trying to do as much stuff as you possibly can with the resources provided with an interesting cascading ability that you gain when you gather new trolls. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game in the Hall of the Mountain King. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you everything in the game and then we'll tell you how to play. So here we have the game in the Hall of the Mountain King and everything that's going to be included in the game. And as you can see, it comes with quite a lot in place two to five players and you're going to be placing down your starting player markers based on the game mode and based on how many players on this board and has the numbers here. I'm playing with blue and red which are your starting player tunnels and you're going to play them either across from each other or next to each other based on how you want to place them. There's going to be these hidden factory markers which will be shuffled up and dealed out five of them which you'll be using in the game and placing on these factory areas here when you place tunnels next to them. Every player is going to get a score marker that starts at zero and goes all the way around and gets to a hundred and it might even go over if you're good enough. Every player is going to start with a player board here along with a certain number of player trolls and you're going to be doing a drafting system with the player trolls allowing you to gather the first four trolls you'll start the game with, the first two trolls you'll start the game with. Uh, additionally there's a bunch of currency in the game. You're going to be getting stuff like these gold doubloons here. You're going to be getting three different types of ore. The red, the gray, and over here uh, the black and these will be you be using to basically create tunnels and tunnels are all over here there's four different types there and four different types there most tunnels have a well half of them have a blank and other ones are going to have a little hole in them which are basically going to be the uh, place where you can place down pedestals which will allow you to place statues on them giving you a lot of points these little gems here are used for spending when you're trying to purchase spell cards and there's a spell deck over here as well as these green tokens here are basically hammers and hammers are going to be used to dig in certain areas on the board that are kind of covered up and they have this little like little circular area here which you can see that they need to be dug from. There's also a first player marker and then there's a three and five point marker for the first person to finish their tableau or their pyramid o trolls and uh, you're also going to be getting trolls in addition to your starting ones. There's ones, twos, and threes. Ones are easier to get, threes are harder to get and finally over here you're going to get these great halls which you can place after building enough tunnels and making them wide spaced out enough throughout the game. There's also the last couple of things. This little board here which I kind of made myself so I'll probably make a better one in the in the Kickstarter than my terrible paper marker but it's used to basically track points when players are scoring points for the uh, pedestals that they're placing and then of course a bag which will be placed down on the troll tableau as you go to purchase them so new ones will pop out from time to time. That's pretty much what you get in the game in the Hall of the Mountain King. Let's go ahead and take you down below now. I'll show you a couple turns of play and how it functions and what you can do and they'll come up and give you my review. Okay, so now we're down below. I'm going to show you basically how a game works and what you can do on your turn. And luckily for us, there's a nice handy dandy player reference right over here that tells you what the four things you can do are. Each player has selected a space in which they're going to start in their areas. And we've dealt out these little pedestals or statues randomly around the circle. But you start with one randomly and then the second one and then the third. And then you kind of just put them in order so that they're all kind of, uh, you know, yellow, uh, sorry, white, orange, blue, white, blue, white white, orange, blue, all the way around until there's eventually only one left. And after you've done that, you're going to do this draft with cards. And the cards you're going to be utilizing are your starting troll cards. So everybody's going to get six of them. You're going to start by shuffling the deck up, and then you're going to be drawing them. You'll be selecting one and placing it, drawing another, selecting one and placing it in each of these four slots here, which means you'll have one left over from the deck and one left over in your hand. 
after you've done that, every player is going to have this gray area here, which is going to be their starting resource pool. So for instance, this player here will get two of these grays there. They'll get one of the one coin, two more gray, and then one of these little hammers, in which case they're going to put them all in their starting resource area or their pool. And then they're going to cover up all of those cards. The same will be done for this player over here, but they're going to get some different resources. They'll be getting that magical crystal there. They'll be getting these two here, a coin, and then one of these black, and they're going to put them all in their pool as well. And then they're going to cover the troll cards up so that you can only see the lighter shades here. After that, they've got your starting resources, you've got your starting player areas, you've got your points ready to go. You've drawn out three spell cards from this deck here and placed them so everybody can see them. You've got your foundry and your resources as well as all of your tunnels available. And then you're going to have a first player marker or starting player marker and you're going to give to the starting player. Over here are the troll decks and you're going to have a one, two, and a three deck which will be shuffled. One will deal out five cards, two will deal out four, and three will deal out three. Put them in this pyramid order because the pyramid order matters just like it matters on your player board. And then you're going to go ahead and have somebody begin the game. And how that works is pretty simple. It tells you you can first choose to cast a spell or activate a workshop. To cast a cell spell, you simply have to pay one of these gems from either any of your trolls or from your area here, and you can put it on any of these three spells that are available. When you do that, you'll take its effect and utilize it, and they all have different things. Some of them will give you multiple resources, others will let you move statues, and some will let you dig better. It just really depends on them. If at any point there's three of these markers on a card, that card is going to get discarded, and then a new one is going to come out. It might go on the bottom of the deck, I'm not too sure, but a new one is going to come out, basically. And that's how spells work. You only do one spell per turn though. You can also activate workshops and workshops are only going to be activated if you are able to uh, basically place something adjacent to them. So for instance if this player had this tunnel connected then this workshop would be, be activated and in which case you're going to actually take the uh, workshop tokens here and there's only going to be five of them. Um, the rest are going to be removed and you're going to then choose between them and place one down and the workshops will allow you to activate them based on the number of sides that are occupied. This is a level one workshop, but let's say this player went and built this, that would make it a level one, two, and a three, in which case you can do this ability three times and it lets you trade in this specific resource for this one or vice versa. And it can only activate one workshop per turn based on its level. And that's basically how workshops work. Once all of them are done, that's all the workshops that are, are able to be utilized throughout the game. Players can actually, if this player connects here and this player managed to get all the way over here, they can both utilize it. They just can't have their tunnels connecting. So that is the casting the spell and that is the activating workshops. After that player does either one of those or both, then he or she can choose to hire a troll or dig a tunnel and score. If you want to hire a troll it's pretty simple you can buy take any of these guys for free if you want any of these guys you'll have to place one coin on each of the trolls that are underneath it so for instance if you want this guy you'll have to go ahead and put one of these coins on each of these guys and you can take this guy and if you want any of these guys you'll have to place a coin on all of the tiers underneath it so three two and then this one or three two and then this one or three two and then this one and that will let you get these bigger stronger scarier trolls that give you more resources and it's always better to have the bigger trolls on your tableau because you'll give you more resources for that when you go ahead and place a troll down so if I just want this guy here I can go ahead and place it right on top just in a pyramid style and then you're going to score resources and it'll cascade so you'll get one coin for that you're going to get a cart that is orange you're going to get one of these bad boys here and you're also going to get one of these bad boys here these function just like here but you have to utilize them from the trolls and if you cascade when there's already resources on a troll then you do not get any additional resources if they're already covered up so spending these is more important than spending these if you can and that's that's basically how that works and it works the similar for the other player as well after you choose to hire a troll you'd move on or instead maybe you want to dig a tunnel and it shows you down here what digging a tunnel is it says how much it costs based on the side over here and then it says what types of minerals you have to use if you want to use the gray ones you can spend three and you'll get three points to build a three structure or you can spend four gray ones to build a four structure and get four points and five for five of course the bigger uh, and better minerals that you spend are going to give you more points for building the bigger of uh, these tunnels so for instance if this player had four of these things here and wanted to build a tunnel they would spend these four grays putting them here and then they'd be allowed to build one of these adjacent to their space so this is blue so it'd match up to here and he could place that like that if he wanted to he can place it pretty much however he'd like 
maybe like that, which because that's kind of good. That'll activate that workshop. And that would be how building a tunnel works. Some of them have anchors, and anchors, when they're placed down, will allow you to basically place down pedestals. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention is when you gather trolls, you're going to have the level twos. They'll all have a pedestal on them. And when you pick them up, you'll place a pedestal in your in your area here that stores trolls. And then if you buy a level or rank three troll, this is allowing you to gather any pedestal you want from the bag. So that gives you some more options, but it's also at a higher cost. Whenever you get rid of one of the trolls, you're actually going to flip over and put a new one in and put a new pedestal from the bag randomly on a two. And that's basically how that functions. Uh, but yeah, you can place pedestals on these guys here. And the reason why you want to do that is because you're just going to score points, especially if you can get these statues on them. Uh, after you've chosen to build a tunnel, you choose to move any of your statues. Moving statues requires these minecarts, and based on the color minecart you have is what statue you can move. So for instance, if this player had built something like this and had this little guy here, he could spin one of his minecarts and move a statue. But this is an orange one, so he wouldn't be able to do that. However, if these guys were switched and this happened to be here, he could spin this singular minecart that is orange to move this orange. And how he moves is he can move from him from any one space to any adjacent space. So he can go from here to any of these four spaces. And that would be just one singular move using a mine cart. The farther you get these guys into the mountain, the more points you're going to score at the end of the game, especially if you can manage to get specific uh, pedestals in the game. Because when you put these guys on top of them, they'll score you more points. But of course, pedestals have a specific requirement. You can only have one type of colored pedestal in each area of these specific colors. So one orange in each of these areas, one blue and one white. After one's placed and there's one on there, you cannot actually place a new one in that specific area. And you'll score points based on my crudely made board here, which also will tell you that you cannot build another one of those specific colors in that specific area. Building these guys farther in is gonna score you more and more points as the game goes on. And that's basically how moving works. If you have a specific mine cart in your supply area, you can spend them and they are considered wild and you can move any pedestal of your color of your choice. Uh, the last thing you will do is you're going to be able to, what's it say over here, uh, dedicate a great hall. So how that works is, let's go ahead and say that this guy was a complete baller and he did something like, oh, I don't know, we'll just go ahead and make something really quick here. This is probably not how he would do it, but <laughs> if he did something like this, he could choose to dedicate a great hall, and in which case he would get to go ahead and take one of these things and place it on top of his tunnels. Now it has to fill the exact amount of a great hall. At the end of the game, he's going to score six points if he's built one, or 15 if he happens to have one of these uh, pedestals on it and one of these guys on it, the statues. These function just like the anchors do, so if you place one, you can actually place one of these on there, and then you can, of course, move the guy into here and place it on there. That's going to score your additional points at the end of the game. Very, very, very useful, and you can dedicate great halls once per turn, provided you have the requirements that are met. Uh, whenever you build a tunnel on these spaces here, you're going to score resources. And additionally, every single time you build a new troll, so for instance, if he had his, let's see, if he had something more like this, let's I'll just go ahead and show you. If he built this troll here, these would all cascade and he'd get all the resources here and he'd have to spend them before he'd want to cascade again. And that's basically the idea of the game. A couple other things to note are hammers will let you dig. So for instance, if he wanted to place this here, he couldn't do that unless he had a hammer because this space requires you to place at least one hammer. If, for instance, he had something more like this he wanted to place, it would cost him two hammers. So if he didn't have two hammers, he wouldn't be able to do that. So if he had two hammers, he could dig, dig, and now he could build this space here. So as you can see, the farther into the tunnel you get, the more hammers are required to get spaces in there. And uh, that's pretty much the idea of the game. You're going to be trying to collect as much resources as you can outside of here, building your tunnels, building your great halls, uh, gathering statues. And obviously, this is a very, very vital and important portion of the game, trying to build stuff like that to get these guys in here, allowing you to move these guys around to get them as far inside the mountain as you can on top of pedestal tools to score you points, utilizing these spells. And once three of them are played, this goes away. And they all do different things, and they'll have some unique ability. This is very, very, very helpful throughout the game. 
And uh, that's it. At the end of the game, basically, when somebody basically scores an entire mountain for a two-player game, or a larger player game, if two people uh, have a complete mountain, there's two more rounds left, in which case players will take their turns and then finally tally scores. You're going to score points for whatever leftover resources you have, for whatever, all the guys on your pedestals, all the guys that um, have these little great halls and whatnot, and then all your statues as well. I think there's a couple other little victory conditions, as well as just the amount of victory points you have from just building tunnels in the game, because every time you build a tunnel, you're going to score points. The last little thing I wanted to mention was that these will score you points based on the player's game. So if you're playing a two-player game and you built your tunnel, you built your pyramid first, you'll score three points. Or in a larger player game, you can score five and then three. And it also will let you know that there's only two rounds left in the game. And the final thing is you can actually build tunnels that are two but you're not going to score any points for doing so, and it's going to cost you two of any resource, uh, two of any of the same resource. So that is pretty much In the Hall of the Mountain King. All right, let's come up and discuss it. So what to say about In the Hall of the Mountain King? Well, first of all, this game has a ton of unique features that I haven't seen in a lot of games before it. It has something interesting as far as it's similar to Castles of Mad King Ludwig as to how you're kind of building a castle in that game. But in this one, you're building tunnels and you're going to be building these instead of spending money in that game, you're spending resources that are gathered by trolls. And the theme is very thick in this game because as you gather trolls, they will give you resources. And based on their hierarchy, it will allow them to have the underlings make more resources for you and so you have to do that in order to build basically increase your empire and you're either going to be trying to get farther into the mountain or perhaps try to build great halls by making your tunnels as wide as possible you're going to have a lot of options the game itself is very very simple there's only four different actions four different things you do on your turn in order and most of them are simple you got what does it say on here you got spells and then you can choose to do your workshops which are very easy make a spell choose a workshop do the actions based on the level then you can either hire a troll by spending the currency or taking the lower one, or you can dig a tunnel. You spend the currency based on the type of currency you want to spend, build the tunnel, and place it adjacent to one of your tunnels, and score points. Finally, you go on to moving statues, which you're just going to spend wheelbarrows or the wagons to move the statues of that specific color, trying to get you on pedestals and on Great Hall pedestals to score you points. Dedicate a Great Hall. Place one down. After that, you're done. But there's a lot of options in this game. I mean, realistically, we have all these different resources to go through and determine, okay, I want this and this. And you know when you made a bad decision, maybe a turn or so later, like, oh, I wish I would have played this instead because there's so many options as to how I want to place. The more people in the game, the crowded it gets, and the more you have to try and manipulate how you want to place your tunnels and where you want to place them. And so it has a lot of like, ooh, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? And it's very different in the number of players based on that, allowing you to kind of manipulate how players are placing to avoid them from putting great halls down and whatnot. In a two-player game, it's going to be less like that. You're more focusing on just building your kingdom as best as possible. Utilizing these specific tunnels is important based on some of them having the anchors and some of them not. The larger ones don't and the smaller ones do. So how you want to manipulate it, that is well as important. Saving hammers to dig farther in because you want to get those pedestals and statues as far into the tunnels you can because that's going to score you more and more points. And also will stop your neighbors using this amazing magical track that I built that I'm sure is going to be much better. <laughs> and the, the thing, it's just funny because I, I, I put this together I feel so bad showing it off. But it, it is a very important part of the game because it's going to allow you to score additional points when you place down the pedestals and how you place them because you're limited as to how and where you want to place them. The spells themselves are very interesting and you kind of almost always want to use a spell if you can on your turn and that's why the spell resource is very vi valuable allowing you to move the different statues allowing you to basically increase the tunnel length that normally you would not be able to build a four but now you can because of a spell or gathering specific resources i like the spells in the game Cascading is awesome. That's my that's my favorite part, but uh, it has a tedious nature as well. It starts off fine, but as it gets to like the higher tiers, there's a lot more cascading. You have to really meticulously make sure you put all the different things in the correct areas. And when you have that final one for the entire cascade, it just takes a little bit longer to place them all and then determine what you want to spend and how you want to spend it. There can be a little bit of analysis paralysis in this game because there's so many options as to how you want to place certain things and what resources you want to spend for what points you want to gather because your next Next turn you might want this specific troll that gives you these specific resources 
which is really good if you're a gamer that wants a lot of strategy, a lot of deep strategy in the game. So this is a deep, it's like a medium to medium heavy strategy game, but it's on the light side as far as how, how easy it is to play. Uh, I like the artwork in the game a lot. I hope that they're gonna increase the amount of artwork for what they have here. Currently, I think they have like seven or eight different types of colors of trolls and whatnot, and all the spells are very unique and different. I love the spell card artwork that's very, very good. And I think people who like this style of game are going to like appreciate the theme and the artwork kind of combined as long as i see some additional artwork for all the different um one tier one two and three trolls i will be satisfied uh, the board itself is a very basic blocky style board so we'll see what they do with that as well a lot of it's prototypey so i'm not going to like judge a book by its cover just yet until i see what it kind of looks like but overall it's just fine for what the board is needed and it does exactly what it needs to do which is building into a mountain i hopefully get to see the amazing artwork on the board similarly to these cards here great halls are a lot of fun to place and there is a lot of strategy as far as how you want to deal with your opponents or whether you want to avoid them completely overall i really had a good time with this game it's one that i was actually not i was i was i was surprised as to how like complex the strategy and whatnot was in this game and when i'm playing against certain people i was like oh, i hope they don't do that even though most of the things do not affect you can't affect other players other than how you choose to place in the board but surprisingly that makes a big difference in this game this game I rate it a success. I'm going to be very excited to see this campaign. This will be one I'm going to be very interested in just to see all the different changes and how they're going to fully fluctuate and make the board and whatnot. I give this game a solid, good game. I enjoyed it. Holly Mountain King. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go check out those other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as take a look at the game in the hall. You can also go and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, kicks, lists, and more. We're going to have a big giveaway here, things about, about maybe a week from now. I think you guys will be looking forward to that because there's a lot of really cool games like Chronicle of Crimes we're giving away. As well as checking out our live stream every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST on Facebook. We give away games live on stream. We have a ton of great designers coming. I think next week we're going to have Level 99 and uh, Aegis, as well as Brotherwise Games. We're all going to come to the studio. We're going to have a lot of fun playing their games at night and then hopefully giving some stuff away for you guys as well. That's all I got for you this time, guys. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.